they try to erase history. The Liberals, the day after they said, oh, we're going to pass a motion to erase everything that happened yesterday, like it didn't happen. So they, they, they just want to rewrite history. Usually you do that in a totalitarian country, not in Canada. Hey, Alexa, for Bad News, and I'm currently in Saint-Hyacinthe in Montreal, and I'm at the Centre des Congrès because this weekend there is two conferences with multiple panelists, and the star of the day is Didier Raoult. For some of you who are not aware of him, he is a specialist in infectious disease, and he is here for promoting his autobiography. During this, this conference, I found Mr. Maxime Bernier, the leader of the People's Party of Canada. I took the time to discuss with him why it was important for him to be here at this conference, but also other topic of actuality. I'm inviting you to listen to my whole interview. Uh, so, Maxime Bernier, you are here. Uh, we have the visit of one of the highest infectiologues in in the world at most, Didier Raoult. So why was it important for you to be here tonight, today? It's important because I, you know, I was following Didier Raoult in the beginning of that history, COVID hysteria, and he's, like you said, an expert, a real expert. And what happened during all that time, that COVID hysteria was not based on science. And now today I'm very pleased that I'm here with other people to listen, a, a real expert telling us what, what happened during that, these uh, three years. It was uh, uh, manipulation, propaganda, and we need to have this debate right now today in Quebec, in Canada, and we don't want to turn the page. That's what the mainstream media are saying. You must turn the page. We must not. We must look back and learning from that experience. And that's why we at the PPC, we are promoting freedom, individual freedom, and real debates. Those scientists have been censored during the pandemic, but now we see that the liberal wants to censor more. They want to censor podcasts and other like influencer what is your position we know that you are against it but what do you think about that censorship that is raising but it would be another way to control a narrative and like we saw during COVID-19 we had one narrative and other point of view was were cancelled during COVID-19. And we need to have more debates in a society. A, a, a strong, free society, it's when you have debates in our society. What I'm looking right now with that bill and these regulations coming from the CRTC, they want to control and they want to impose only a kind of one narrative. So that's why we are against that. It's not democratic. We need to have more people expressing their point of view. And after that, the population will be able to decide what they want to do. So it, with Trudeau and the CRTC, it's a way to control what is happening on social media. You know, there's good things and bad things on social media. People must use their intelligence and find their information at the right place. But I believe in people. I don't believe in a government telling us what to do. People must be able to judge and they must be able to have access to different informations. And so I want to know your point of view of what happened really recently at the parliament in Ottawa. So they give an ovation to a Nazi SS. So can you tell us like what was your thought at that moment? Oh my God, the, all these establishment politicians told us freedom fighters during the convoy, the freedom convoy, that we were Nazi, xenophobe, and we know that was not true. They just tried to discredit us at that time. And now we, we saw the reality a couple of days ago. They had a real Nazi in front of them, and they were okay with that. And don't tell me, oh, I didn't know. No, no when the speaker did present that person, he said he fought against the Russian during the Second World War. If you're against the Russian, and the Russian at that time were our allies, you're pro-Nazi, and that's a fact. So they gave a standing ovation to a Nazi, and they were telling us, freedom fighters, that were Nazi during the COVID hysteria and the freedom convoy. So it's sad for the country, because now 
we have a, a, not a great reputation at the international scene. And Trudeau was telling us a couple of years ago in 2015, Canada is back at the international scene. Yes, we are back, but uh, he's not representing our country. And it's a shame what they did. And also what they tried to do, they tried to erase history. The Liberals, the day after they said, oh, we're going to pass a motion to erase everything that happened yesterday, like it didn't happen. So they, they, they just want to rewrite history. Usually you do that in a totalitarian country, not in Canada. So the People's Party is there for fight for people, and we have a strong vision of our country with more freedom and no censorship. How, as a society, we can accept that a prime minister have as much candle on his shoulder than that, and we do nothing? But I'm working hard for being sure that you know we we'll have real changes in this country. I understand that the, a lot of people, a lot of Canadians, voted for Justin Trudeau. But now, you know, I'm telling people, vote for what you believe. You'll have more chances to have what you want if you vote for what you want. And yes, we will get rid of Justin Trudeau. And I'm proposing, we, the PPC, we are proposing a strong vision based on four principles, individual freedom, personal responsibility, respect and fairness. And I'm asking people, go on our website, peoplespartyofcanada.ca, read our platform. If you like it, I hope you support us and all together we'll be able to get rid of Trudeau. And if you don't, like it, I won't pander to you. You can vote for one of these establishment political parties. Can you explain one phenomenon that is happening in Quebec? One recent poll showed that the Liberals are at the head and afterwards it's the Bloc Québécois. Can you explain why in Quebec is so different than the rest of Canada? Because of the Bloc Québécois. But as you know, the Bloc Québécois won't be in government. And that's the kind of a an opposition, but we can be a very strong opposition. And people in Quebec, we have, a, we are the alternative against the Bloc Québécois. Don't forget, the Bloc Québécois was, and and all the the, the uh, MPs, they were okay with the COVID mandates and lockdowns. They are okay with the climate change hysteria right now. So, because in Quebec. They think that if they vote for the Bloc Québécois, they will, the Bloc Québécois will protect their culture and their identity. But that's not the case. The Bloc Québécois is in favor of mass immigration. And we know that in Quebec, that debate on immigration is very important. We want to protect our own culture. So we are the only national political party that will protect our Canadian identity and will fight against against mass immigration, not the Bloc Québécois. So we must ask all these Quebecers who voted for the Bloc Québécois and for the Liberals, why? But I believe that maybe in 2025, they will look at a real alternative. Make your voice heard that we want to stop the censorship, especially in the medical field. Go over stopthecensorship.ca, sign our petition, share it, and make a difference.